Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about salt for chloral kali as a feedstock in electrolysis and production of caustic chlorine and of course soda ash. It was in January this year that um, uh, Technon Orbicam asked me uh, to make a presentation at the Singapore 24th Chloral Kali Conference and uh, of course uh, I said yes and uh, was very much looking forward to uh, having some good time in Singapore but uh, the coronavirus changed it all. So welcome to this virtual recording. The contents of my presentation will be chloralkali dynamics. Now, what do we understand under dynamics? This is the development of the use of salt, of sodium chloride, as a feedstock in industrial use over the time. And understanding of the driving forces behind the development now, of course, if we understand the driving forces, then I feel that we can also uh, predict the future development. And this is what I would like to attempt now. So first, let's take a look what has been the development of the salt production over the past 50 years. In 1970, the production of salt was about 146 million tons per annum. This year, 2020, we estimate that it will be 338 million tons. The development of the years we have uh, captured in this graphics. We can see that the trend line is rising towards the last years. It is almost exponential. We can also see that over the past 10 years, between 2010 and today, there were many revisions of these production figures. Now, why there were so many revisions? In the past, the agencies that collect production figures from governments around the world were only publishing these government-published figures. And the informal sector and the artisan production of sodium chloride has not been uh, adequately considered. These agencies were criticized for this and they revised their figures accordingly. Now let's take a look how the world salt production was actually consumed. The salt production grew from 100% production in 1970 to 231% in 2020. The average growth rate was 1.71% and almost 40% of the salt was used for production of caustic and chlorine and almost 20% for production of synthetic soda ash. The remaining over 40% were used for all other uses and one says that for salt there are about 1,500 of them. Essential for making any prediction is to understand what has been the driving force behind the change, in this case behind the growth. What we know is that the world population grew from around 3.7 billion to around 7.8 billion in the 50 years between 1970 
and 2020. In percentage terms, it is a growth from 100% to 211%. The growth rate was 1.41%. The other interesting parameter is uh, the per capita development of consumption. When I speak about consumption and production, of course, I'm assuming that no salt is just accumulating or getting, uh, getting lost and that production and consumption are the same in the long run. The world per capita salt consumption between 1970 and uh, 2020 went from about 109 gram per person per day in 1970 to 118 in the year 2020. And there was a little drop in per capita consumption between the years 1990 and 2000. This is how it looks like when we put all these per capita consumption figures in a graph. We can see that the growth rate has been very slow, only about 0.2% per annum. So what can we deduct from knowing all that? We can say that although the per capita consumption fluctuated between 90 and about 120 gram per day and per person, the growth was very slow. And what is interesting to note is that the physiological salt intake required for birth survival is only about 5 gram per day per capita, per, per person. And therefore, about 95% of all the salt was consumed for other purposes than for human consumption. And what are the other purposes? Let's take a look in the next slide. The question is, what will be the salt requirement in the year 2029? Nine or ten years from today. We think that there are some major assumptions that we can make. One of them is that the population growth will continue the way it has been developing over the past 50 years and not significantly different. That means that the growth will continue at a rate of about 1.4% per annum. We also assume that the major consumers of salt, that is the chemical industry, will not change the consumption of salt per ton of their product. And the chemical product, the PVC, aluminium, glass, will change in line with the growth of the world population. Assuming that, we will need about 400 million tons of salt in the year 2029, which is about 82 million tons or about 20% more than what it is today. And this is a large amount of salt. In this slide it shows how we attempted to make the predictions. We were looking at production and potential production growth, at capacity utilization, at requirement for additional capacity and at the way how new projects are being 
implemented. So, first of all, let's take a look at the salt production. This is the blue line from around 300 million to around 335 million in the year 2019. And further growth to around 400 million in the year 2029. The next we have taken a look at was the red full line. This is what we know about the total world salt production capacity in the past 10 years. A marginal growth from 400 million to 435 million in the year 2019. Now how this will have to grow? We can estimate the required production capacity on the basis of capacity utilization. And this is the other item that we looked at and this is the yellow line between the year 2010 and 2019 there has been almost no change 76 percent capacity utilization on that basis we are predicting that the required capacity in the year 2029 will be well in excess of 500 million tons which corresponds to about 82 million tons compared with today. We were following the new projects that were announced between 2014 and 2019 we can see that in 2014 there were 20 million tons per annum new announced capacity that only in the year 2017 it went up to 34 million and last year about 72 million additional capacity was announced. Now let's take a look what must be done to satisfy the growing demand. Thinking about that, we are assuming that the salt production capacity utilization rate of 76% will not change significantly. This is mainly because solar salt works require quite a large additional reserve capacity because their actual production is dependent on the weather and on the climate. We also know that new projects take about six years between announcement of the plans and the actual production. And we also know that only about a half of all the announced project will ever get implemented. This leads us to the conviction that significantly more new salt production projects will have to be announced and implemented in the next few years to reach the required production capacity of about 530 million tons in the year 2029. So what are the results of our calculations for how much additional new production capacity will be required. This table shows the result. It shows that already in the year 2015 about 10 million tons of additional production capacity should have been announced. Similar in 2016 about 28 million 
1730 million, 1832 million, 1924 million, in the year 2020 already 112 million, and this goes up to 164 million in the year 2023. The required additional projects are shown in the graph as a green dotted green line. This is the dotted green line up to the year 2019 here around 10, 20, uh, 30, 30 million tons of salt production capacity more jumping to 112 million in this year which has not been announced so far and rising to about 164 million tons of additional capacity announced in the year 2023. So of course you might be asking what are the salt prices today? The prices are the best guarded secret of any company and of any businessman. However, what we do know is that the solution mined brine and salt, which is about one ton of salt in four tons of such brine, are priced at about six dollars per ton of salt of sodium chloride. The next more expensive form of salt is the rock salt which sells between 10 and 15 dollars per ton loaded on a truck at the mine. High quality solar salt such as is being produced in Australia, Mexico is priced between 18 and 25 dollars per ton on FOB basis. The prices vary depending on size of the shipment, on the contract, whether spot or long term, and of course also on the quality. Australian Mexican prices are more, more expensive than Indian prices which are believed to be of lower quality. Vacuum salt in the Northern Hemisphere is sold in bulk for somewhere between 60 and 90 tons. 60 and 90 dollars per ton on free on track basis. And this is because vacuum salt, of course, requires a lot of energy for evaporation, which is expensive. Dry salt is much more expensive, but that is of not prime interest to the costichlorine industry. And just uh, as a matter of uh, extreme, the supra-pure salt for laboratory purposes, with a purity exceeding 99.999% is selling at around USD 1000 per kilo, which corresponds to $1 million per ton. So far so good. We know that we need additional salt production capacity. Now the question is how to get it. There are three basic options. The one is to build a completely new grassroot salt production facility. This way is being followed in a number of projects, particularly in the North West Australia and in other places. And an example of that we give in reference number three on one of the later slides. It is the BCI Minerals Mardi project in the Pilbara region where salt partners are involved 
supplying our salt purification technology. Less expensive way is to expand existing capacity and these brown roots projects are usually less expensive because all projects elements are known, the approvals are existing, however the cost of planning, equipment and construction is the same as in the first option. The third option is to increase productivity of the existing facilities. And for that, salt partners can offer the Hydrosol XP salt purification technology, which we have found in a number of projects producing solar salt of high quality, that the present technology is losing between 18 and 20 percent of the harvested salt, whereas the Hydrosol XP technology can do the same with only 2 to 3 percent salt losses, therefore increase productivity by 14 to 17 percent and further improve the salt quality. Now, a few words about Salt Partners salt purification technology. This is an example, one of the largest plants that we have built, with about 10 meter diameter of the hydro extractor. This is an example of a plant that was built specifically for caustic chlorine production and it produces the purest industrial salt in Europe. The calcium and magnesium content in the product salt is less than 1 ppm and sulfate is around 50 ppm, which is only about a half or one third of what the other best industrial salt in Europe is having. I mentioned that we are presenting some references. One reference is to the United States Geological Survey about production figures over a great number of years. The second reference is the United Nations database on world population and the third one is the BCI Minerals Marty project in Pilbara, which has been published on the BCI Minerals website and is available under the link of the reference number three. Now, of course, to any chloralkali producer, the question of how to secure availability of salt of the feedstock at a reasonable cost. For that, I would like to draw on the advice of Mr. Ernst Solvay, the founder of Solvay Chemical Company. Mr. Ernst Solvay was a wise man and he had a great capability of surrounding himself with the most brilliant brains of his time. This picture I was given when I was working on a project for Solvay. This picture shows the first meeting of the Solvay Scientific Council in the Hotel Metropole in Brussels in the year 1911. And we can see here great names like Planck, Lawrence, Madame Curie, Rutherford, Einstein. So what was the advice of Mr. Solvay? It was very simple. Secure your raw material and control your costs. And who is following Mr. Solvay's advice? 
will turn his salt into gold. So why don't you do it too? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention and until next time.